Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to continue talking about physical chemistry and starting a new chapter, chapter seven of the Engel book. Well, we're going to look at real gases. It's kind of like general chemistry, just taking it once again a step too far. Because that's what PCHEM does. Take things a step too far. <laughs> Let's start off by looking at that. So we get to remind ourselves, well, we get ideal gas equation. That's always a good starting point. And honestly, if we weren't in physical chemistry, that's usually good enough for most people. Ideal gas equation will handle gases at moderately dispersed uh, situations, but it makes several false assumptions. It assumes that all gases are considered point masses, and that gases do not interact. But a gas cannot be compressed more than its total volume, well, total molar volume. And gases do actually interact when they get close enough. But considering most gases are very dispersed, they're very low density, we don't have to worry about that. We're not going to compress our gases to the point where they're, they're going to condense into liquid. So for our equation of real gases, we're going to look at various different ones uh, with increasing complexity and try to deal with those. So we'll discuss real gases and that we're essentially going to find a way to better approximate a real gas. Not all of it's perfect, but we're going to introduce gas dependent constants A and B, where A is the attractive part that deals with the intermolecular potential, and B is the minimum molar volume. So, like, how, what is the actual size of a gas atom or gas molecule? So, you can't compress it more than the atom without destroying the atom. So the first equation we'll see is our friend, the van der Waals. If you've been through general chemistry, you've seen this guy before. It's, it's named after the, collect, the term for the collective uh, collection of all attractive and repulsive forces, our hydrogen bonding, our, our dipole-dipole, our, our London dispersion forces, all that collected as van der Waals. And so we see the equation is either Pressure equals RT over the molar volume minus B minus A over molar volume squared. What you might also have seen is NRT over VNB minus N squared A over V squared. Remember, what is molar volume? Molar volume is, is what, like V squared is molar volume is volume divided by moles, the number of moles in a volume. So basically what we're doing to get molar volume is we're dividing the whole equation by n to get to cancel out the n. So if you divide the top by n and the bottom by n, you get molar volume and that n goes away and that n goes away. Yes, this is b squared. We have to divide by n squared, which takes care of that n. It's that molar volume squared. So just get used to that molar volume. It's a way to encapsulate the moles of gas into the volume and make things a little bit easier. So a and b, of course, are the gas-specific Van der Waals constant. So the next one we'll see is the Redley Kwong and the BD Bridgman uh, equation states. Redley Kwong is a little bit trickier because the first part starts the same, the RT over molar volume minus B. But now when we deal with uh, A, the impressive thing, we're also encapsulating temperature into that. 
temperature in such a way that now this trying to deal with how temperature will affect the attractive forces because as the gases are being moved closer and farther away, the amount of energy they have is going to affect how they attract e to each other. I mean, you gotta remember hydrogen bondings, hydrogen bonds are good at low temperatures, at high temperatures, they're going to still break away. You can cause DNA to break apart on the, the, the double strand to the split apart at high enough temperatures because you can break those hydrogen bonds between both strands. So we're going to take into account the temperature. And now no longer is Vm squared, but it's Vm times Vm plus B. So we're dealing with the actual size of the gas molecules times the molar volume. So that's a little different, but it's essentially the same. The same, we're using the same A and B, but the, the variables are actually going to be slightly different numbers than the van der Waals constant. So do not use the van der Waals A and B for the red the Kwong A and B. Those are completely, even though the variables are the same letters, they are different values. But this will provide a greater accuracy over a wider range of temperature. Now, well, I'm going to show you this BD Bridgman, where we will not use it, is so complex. So it starts out RT over VM squared. It's 1 minus C over VM T cubed with VM minus B minus A over VM squared, where A equal to a constant A sub naught, 1 minus A over VM. And B is B naught over 1 minus B VM. So all these things are gas dependent and it's a hot mess to try to deal with. We have three variables, A, B, and C, in addition to A naught and B naught. We're not gonna really deal with that one, but see, we can get really, really, really complex if we want to try to model gases. Now, and there's also the virial equation state. This last equation is uh, different because it uses a power function of the inverse molar volume. We're instead of like our typical one, it's like it's more molar volume dependent than the than anything else. So you have P equals RT over one over VM plus a beta which relates to the temperature plus over VM squared plus a, not a beta, a B times, which is a function of T, plus C of a function of T over VM cubed, or plus a D of a function of T over VM to the fourth, and so on and so forth. We could continue on, but oftentimes you, you get the, the addition of successive terms result in so little of a change, it's not super important. So typically doing this, to the second term is usually okay. But these, as I said, these, these terms are both gas dependent and temperature dependent. So depending on what temperature we have, it's gonna change your B and your C and all that. So you can get really interesting terms. Now, if B as a function of T is negative, it means there's an attractive potential will dominate at that temperature. But if it's positive, it means there's a repulsive thing. So same, like if this is negative, that means this term is going to get smaller. And so the pressure is going to be reduced because we're being attractive. If this is positive, we're going to get a higher pressure. So it's going to be repelling each other. So. Oh, sorry, I was looking ahead. Okay, so let's start off by looking at some of these, the quick problem. So let's use these guys and to just calculate 
just to calculate what is the pressure of CO2 at 300 Kelvin and 700 Kelvin if the molar volume is 0.3 liters per mole using all the equations of state. So, sure, you could look at the answer down there, but I'm going to actually work now. With you. So, let's start with our P equals R T over Vm. There's our ideal. So, we, we've defined Vm as 0.3 meters per mole. Please note that the constants A and, and B are in terms of bars per decimeters. Remember a decimeter is a decimeter cubed is equal to a liter. So that's going to be convenient. So we need it. Our pressure is going to be in bars. So A or R is going to be 0. 08314. So temperature is just going to be 300. So the first one, oh, which is 300 times our R over 0.3. We can do that. That's not bad. Times point divided by 0.3, you'd get, well, 83 bars. That's pretty intense bar. Now let's do it again at 700 Kelvin. So we just switch out 300 for 700. And you're gonna get a much bigger number at 194. So that's the ideal. Not perfect, but that's what we get with ideal. So doing it again. Now we have the van der Waals. Van der Waals now becomes, uh, we got P is equal to RT. So that stays the same, but now it's BM minus B. And minus A over BM squared. So our VM minus B is point Three minus zero point zero four two nine. So our molar volume goes down just a little bit because we have a little bit less space to deal with. So our molar volume goes to point two five seven one. Now A is three point six five eight. We're divided by our molar volume squared. So that is going to be a term that's 40.64. 40.64. So that's not going to change. So we have now R 0.08314 times T 300 divided by our new molar volume, 0.2571, minus 40.64. So according to our uh, Van der Waals, the pressure should actually be 56, which 56.37, which is a huge change. That's a 30 bar, almost a full 30 bar difference. Now, at a higher temperature, let's do it again. So 700 times 0.08314 divided by 0.2571 minus 40.64 is 185.7. So according to Van der Waals, it doesn't change nearly as much over at that higher temperature. It only, it's only what, like nine, if even that, like eight, Bars difference as opposed to what, like 27 bars difference. So there's a much, it's much greater difference at that lower temperature.
So let's look at the then now where the Kwong. Where the Kwong says, well, that P equals RT over VM minus B. Now it's equal to the, oh, well, now it's also. Now it's also minus a over the square root of t. And that's a big thing. One over vm vm what, like plus b. Yeah, vm plus b. So, so that's going to change things a little bit. So first, let's find what, what's Vm minus B. Vm minus B, so 0.3 minus our 0 0.02971. So that bottom turn right there is 0. 27029. Now, another thing that will change is VM times VM plus B. So, VM 0.3 times 0.3 plus 0 0.02971. We invert that and multiply by A. A is 64.63. So you have Nate and so you have that negative 653.4 divided by the square root of T as that other term. So let's look at this. So that's what we got now. So let's look at 300 Kelvin, 300 times 0 0.08314 divided by 0 0.27029 minus 653.4 divided by the square root of 300. So we've changed our pressure a bit, 54.55 at that lower temperature. So not too wrong or not too different in the van der Waals at the low temperature. But at the higher temperature, so 700 times 0 0.08314 divided by 0 0.27029 minus our 653.4 divided by square root of 700. Now it's actually 190.6. So saying, actually, the, the van der Waals dropped the pressure perhaps a bit too much when comparing it to the uh, ideal gas. The ideal gas is maybe a little bit closer to being correct than the ideal gas was. So we're trying to readjust for that higher temperature. The, the ideal gas was correct at the high temperature, but maybe less correct at the low temperature. And of course, finally, doing the variable coefficient. So select all. So the variable coefficient, they give us that, that, that uh, what, centimeters cubed, what's it? Now you have 126 centimeters cubed per mole, but a centimeter cubed is a milliliter. So, and so we have uh, we have R T plus one over V M, and we'll say plus one over B over V M squared. Now, in order to get these into the right units. So B at 300, 
you get 300 is 126 centimeters cubed per mole. So if that's milliliters, then that means there is uh, one centimeter cubed milliliter, which means there is a thousand milliliters and one liter. So a negative, so it would be B is actually going to be, well, it's negative 0.126 liters per mole. So with that in mind, looking at our virial coefficient, so 1 over 0.3, 1 divided by 0.3 plus negative 0.126 divided by 0.3 squared gives us a value of 1.93, which we can multiply by our R, 8314, and our temperature, 300. So at the virial actually claims the pressure would actually be 48.22 at 300. And once again, the virial for temperature at 700, it'd be 1.18. So at 700, it'd be negative 0 0.00118. So dealing with that, 1 over 0.3 minus 0 0.00118 divided by 0.3 squared gives us a factor of 3.32, which we multiply by our 8.314 and 298. Well, actually add 700. And so we get 193.2. So once again, this is actually a step up, step closer in the right direction than our bank. And so that's even getting closer back to the ideal gas. So at that high temperature, it's actually closer to the ideal gas than we would think because of that virial. So, but it's actually a little bit lower than we would think based on Van der Waals or Red Kwong, but it's way, way, way off with the ideal gas law. So looking at those, we just have three or four little slightly more complex ways of looking at gases. But considering all the what we've done so far, this is hardly what I would call the hardest part of physical chemistry. It's just a little bit of So in the next couple slides, we'll look at some of the, some of the, uh, we'll in the next couple slides, next video, we will look at the limitations and things such as the critical temperature and the critical volumes and things that what's going to cause our gas to stop acting like a gas. And we're going to use those values to eventually learn how we calculate those constants A and B. So we'll continue on this a little bit later.